Hey guys, welcome back to the show. So last night I was responding to some comments on the YouTube channel like we typically do and ran across the video where we did some stainless steel flux core welding with fume extraction and ran across a couple of gems in the comment section. So the first comment is from Jim Bo. Okay, that doesn't sound like a fraudulent account. Those guns are way too heavy. Man up and deal with a little smoke in my hood. Are you for real? The thing is way too heavy. Well, Jim Bo, why don't you man up and use a real account instead of being a troll? But let's test it regardless. So today we're gonna use a regular pocket fish scale. Probably not the most accurate thing in the world, but it's gonna get us relatively close to see if there's a significant difference between the fume extraction gun and some of the other 300 amp torches that are on the market. So we'll go ahead and start off, all these torches are 300 amp rated. So we'll go ahead and start off with this first one here, torch A. And it's weighing in at three pounds, eight ounces. So I'm gonna pretty much hold them the same height off the floor. This is about where you'd be operating the, uh, the torch, you know, in work, normal work environments. So that's really all you're gonna be holding. Then zero it back out. Go ahead and measure torch B, same height, three pounds, two ounces. Now we'll go ahead and weigh the, uh, the extraction gun that's supposed to be significantly heavier. And we're looking at three pounds, zero ounces. So not a significant difference in the weight. Kind of puts that theory to bed there, Jimbo, if that's your real name. You, uh, you can use a lighter gun and you don't have to huff the fumes. So moving on. All right, so next up is Nestor Jedkins. He says, I don't have the money to waste on twice the gas getting sucked into my gun. That gun's just gonna suck up all your shielding gas and give you porosity. God, unlike my weld porn. Nailed it. What would you guys think of a typical CFH setting for gas metal arc welding on short circuit would be? 75, 25 gas. Yes, you sir, there with the face. Yes, 25, 25 CFH. So I'll tell you what, we'll go ahead, we'll set the uh, flow meter up to 25 CFH. We'll run a test with the fume extraction off and we'll run the same CFH and run it with fume extraction at 100%. So let's we'll see what we can do. All right, so that's pretty much your your uh, your standard, typical short circuit MIG weld right there. No porosity, 25 CFH. We didn't use fume extraction that time. We're gonna go ahead and crank up the fume extraction as high as it'll go. Use the fume, same CFH on the, uh, the cylinder. Um, we'll see if we get any different results. All right, so this is a bit excessive. We got to crank up enough to run two fume extraction guns simultaneously, but we plugged off the other orifice so we can get 100% coming out of one gun. It's a bit excessive, but I just want to show you guys that it can work and it's not going to suck up all your shielding gas. All right, so that's the uh, the second weld. You know, if I put these side by side, you really wouldn't be able to tell me which was welded with fume extraction and which one was welded without. I mean, they're pretty much identical for the most part. Uh, people would uh, anticipate their shielding gas getting sucked out of the area and getting porosity in their weld due to lack of shielding gas coverage, but that's not the case at all. I mean, they're identical welds. All right, so last but not least, we have Briggs Murtaugh. Really? Starting to notice a pattern here. Big fan of lethal weapon, are you? He says, yo, brother, there ain't no way you're getting that gun in the joints I'm in all day long. Bro, you ain't getting that gun in them tight gaps. I'm well not all day. Well, we'll give it a shot, Briggs. All right, so we went ahead and mocked up a couple plates. Um, as you can see with this torch here, without fume extraction on it, it's a relatively tight joint to get in there at the appropriate angles, uh, be able to work through that joint. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and try it with the fume extracting gun. Get up in here, push. I'm using metal core wire. Should be able to 
to ride that all the way down there. It's about a two and seven eighths gap, which is, is plenty tight for any, um, any application. I would also anticipate these would be welded on the outside too, so you're gonna get additional strength in that area. I just wanna see if we can get in that tight area here. All right guys, not the easiest, not the most accessible. You can probably see a little bit of variation in contact tip to work distance, but we got her done. Uh, sometimes you just gotta get in position and figure out what's gonna work for you. Uh, but we were able to get the fume extraction in to a tight spot. So I would take that, you know, versus breathing in, you know, potential welding fumes all day. So there you go, Murtaugh. Maybe you're getting too old for this shit. If you guys didn't get that joke, go back to 1987. All right guys, so that's pretty much it for this episode. Hope you guys enjoyed watching it. Uh, thanks for tuning in. We definitely appreciate the support. Hope you're able to learn something. So until next time, make every well better than your last. <laughs> this is so demeaning. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen my tape there? Somebody's got a case of the Mondays. Are you for real? <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm just here for Todd's amusement. <laughs> Have you my table? Lower. How's this? <laughs> 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 <laughs>